<laughs> well, hello there again, friend and family. I see you got past the kitty crew again and Gracie. Yeah. Well, like I say, welcome back to the little old country kitchen. And you might see we got several things set now. And if you watched the previous video about what could you do if all you had is potatoes, well, tonight I'm going to show you one of the many ways I enjoy a tasty treat or an amazing sight. Made out of, of course, the humble potato. And what I have starting here is some good old russet potatoes. Now, I'm not going to be using that whole four pound bag. No. I'm going to be using these two right here. They've all got scrubbed up really good. Because those aren't going to be peeled. No. We're not peeling potatoes tonight. We're going to skip that step. But what we also have is a plethora of seasoning. We've got some onion powder here. We sure do. Some garlic powder as well. Some paprika. Gotta have it. Some Italian seasoning. Oh yeah. Give it a little bit of that European flavor. Some cayenne pepper. To give it just a little spice. To make it all so nice. As always, some ground black pepper, some salt, not a lot, but some, because it's a flavor enhancer, and some extra virgin olive oil. And that's about it. It seems like a lot, but it's not. Just going to make these here little old humble spuds ever so flavorful but before we get to putting our spice mix together prepping our potatoes and getting them all jazzed up here we got to start with one other thing so now we got to go over to the cooking utensil we're going to be using this evening So now we're over here at our toaster oven. Yep, we surely are. And we're gonna be using a certain feature on it today. And one I'm gonna chat about for just a minute. But first we're gonna hit bake. Okay, we're gonna hit bake. And then you see right down here, it says convection. We're gonna hit that next. Surely we are. What's that going to do? Well, I'll explain in a minute. And then we're going to run that time up. Because we got to preheat it and get it going. Then we're going to set the temperature. For what we're going to be doing this evening, we're going to be going with 425. And we're going to hit start. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using convection, well, this particular recipe for my version of southern sp style spiced potato wedges yeah I want them to be crispy and this recipe works really wonders if you got one of them there new thing dangle air fryers did you know that all an air fryer is countertop version is a countertop convection oven yeah it's got a fan that circulates air circulates that heat all around what you're cooking to make it all the more crispy and this particular toaster oven also has a convection feature making it a much larger air fryer so hey if you have a toaster oven you may already have an air fryer if you don't have one of them countertop ones. Something to note, especially with the countertop kind. They got that deep basket and people tend to fill them all up chock full and they'll cook. But if you look all this up, first of all, some of you will, to verify indeed is your fancy countertop air fryer convection oven which I'll guarantee you it is, you'll also find out 
that if you don't put a single layer in there and keep space between everything, you're defeating the benefit of air frying because it gets super crispy. Like frying, as in deep frying or pan frying, the magic is circulating that hot air around that food. But we got our convection oven heating up. So hey, let's get on to making our spices and prepping some potatoes. Okay? So now that we got that toaster oven heating up, we got to mix up our spice mix. What's going to add the flavor to those taters? What we've got here is a gallon Ziploc bag. Now you could use a glass bowl, stainless steel bowl, plastic bowl, whatever makes you happy. I use this because I'm only using two taters. And I already know I'm going to have more spice mix than it needed for those two taters. So this is my way of saving it. Yeah. When I'm done seasoning this up, I'll seal it back up and I'll chunk it in the freezer to use later. Saving all these expensive spices. And them onion powder, my garlic powder, all of them. Spices have gone through the moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some of this onion powder. Right here. We got us a teaspoon. We're just going to reach on in there. Don't got to be perfect. We're going to drop in a heaping teaspoonful of that onion powder. Next up, the garlic powder. Oh yeah. Another heaping teaspoonful. Now, for the Italian seasoning, which we got right here, we got a tablespoon. Sort of kind of level. We're going to drop that on in there. We'll get out our teaspoon again. And we're going to drop this in. One teaspoon. And another teaspoon. Paprika. And like I say, if you got some of that smoked stuff, woo, all the more better. So we're going to be putting two teaspoons of paprika. I love it. Now, depending on your taste preferences and whether you can tolerate it or not, I like to have just a touch of spice. Not too much. I don't want to make it mouth burning. So I'm only going to be putting me in a half a teaspoon of that there cayenne. Right there. And then, you know, that ground black pepper that gives it a nice bite. I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of that in as well. See where this is all going? And then, salt. We all know potatoes love salt, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put us in a nice teaspoonful, sort of, kind of. A little more won't matter, or a little less. So we got all that in there. But we got one thing left. Now, I'm going to share my secret ingredient with you. Just so, just for y'all. But I have to get it out first. Because memory was failing me. That's why it's probably a secret. <laughs> so let me get it. And I'll show it to you. So, what's our secret ingredient? Voila. Grated Parmesan cheese from the fine folks at Food Club. And we're going to be dropping us in there. Oh, 
good old tablespoon. And just for look, another one. Two tablespoons. Right there. And that's our spice mix. We're just going to take that for right this second. Sort of kind of roll it up. But then we got to add us something to moisten up our taters. So, we're going to be adding a little bit of olive oil right here. There's one. There's two. Three. There's four. Four tablespoons. Or if you prefer, a quarter of a cup. So we got our spice mix and our oil all in there. We're going to seal that up. Press a little bit of air out. And then we're just going to massage it some. Get it all happy. Now, if it don't get as moist as you want or think you need, add a little more olive oil. There's no magic to this. But just mix it all together with your hands. Another reason I like using this uh, Ziploc bag is sort of kind of keeps my hands. I'm getting all oily. I'll be it. I know. That all oil keep my hands lily soft. <laughs> Plus, when I'm done seasoning these potatoes, like I'm telling you, whatever seasoning mix is left, I'll press the air out of it, seal it back up, roll it up, chunk it in the freezer for the next time. So there you have it. Now all you gotta do is get those taters prepped and get the seasoning. Okay? So we gotta get these potatoes prepped up, don't we? And we're just gonna take our little old chef knife and we're gonna cut the first one half. Okay? And we're going to cut it in half again. Yep, we are. Then we're going to turn it over. And what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it over like this. And I'm going to cut it again. Don't have to be perfect. Okay? Now here's a, here's a, here's a trick. If you don't want them really thick, you know, you can hit them again. Yeah, you can cut them right down again. But you know, I'm getting a little bit older. My hands aren't as steady as they once were. Nope, they aren't. So they might not be perfect. Still be okay. We'll just send them over there to the back. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this. It's just the way I do it. You know. So that potato there became about eight potato wedges. There we go. We're just chunking them on in there. And these are medium rusty potatoes. Don't got to be those super nice big ones. And do you got to use russets? Well, in my mind, you sort of got to. But you could use those yellow gold, red ones, if you want to. It ain't going to make no difference. I guess. I've always used the russets. So I don't know what to tell you. 
and around here potato wedges are very common fare in the convenience stores that we have that serve up such things as fried chicken or Cajun style fried chicken, chicken tenders and all that in their hot bars. So we got those potatoes all mixed up, cut up in there. So now make sure you seal your bag up. Don't press a lot of air out of there. And this is where you just get violent with it. You know? You're just gonna wanna make sure you get them down there. Rub all that spices all around them. Try not to tear your bag. That'd be good. See, I got a little pocket of spice there. I turn that corner inside out. And if nothing more, keep your hands right now all nice and clean. So we'll just leave them there. Well, we got a little bit nasty. Probably because that's a cheap bag and it probably gave way. But now we got to prep our pan to get these on into the oven. So let's get our pan prepped. That's a little toaster oven pan there. And we're going to line it with a little bit of foil. Now I'm going to be using a special foil. You don't got to. You could use regular foil and spray it, I would suggest. Or can you use some of this here fancy Reynolds wrap? Heavy duty, non-stick. Yeah, this is jam up. That's a little bit pricey. But it's really good. And you're going to want to put the dull side up because that's got the no stick on it. What I like about this is you can actually wipe it clean and use it quite a few times. Plus nothing sticks and you ain't got to use that there chemical spray. Okay? Think of this as a silicone baking mat. And then we're going to get out our taters. Now this is where we're going to get a little nasty. Woo! And we're just going to place them on there. Leave a little bit of a gap between them. That's the magic in air frying, is you want that air to be able to circle, circulate around them. Oh yeah, they got plenty of that seasoning on them. And like I say, if you think they're got too much, add a little more olive oil. That'll thin it down. Some of these got a little too much, maybe. Maybe not enough. But I already know. These are going to be tasty. Me using that there half a teaspoon cayenne. They're just going to have some warmth. Oh yeah. You're going to know it's there. So if you can't tolerate that. Yeah. Cut it back some. There we go. Right like that. All got spacing. All sitting up on the skins. Which is important too. You can lay them over, but then you're going to have to flip them. 
But if you put them skin side down, I found you don't have to flip. Well, let me get my hands all washed up, and then we'll get these in the oven and start percolating. Okay? So there they are, looking fine, all spiced up. Woo! Ready to become tasty and all so crispy. Yeah, we're going to have to add a little more time because we've been chatting with y'all. This toaster oven is nice and warm. And that's what we want. Make sure you preheat. Okay? So let's get them on in there. Right now. Be careful. That oven's hot. There we go. Don't dally. Close her on up. Now, these should be ready, depending on your toaster oven, between about 30 to 40 minutes. But we're going to come back in 20 and give them a little official doneness checker. And I'll show you that when we get to it. Okay? Well, they've been in there for 20 minutes. Let's just give them an intermission. You know, an intermediate check. And see if they're cooking okay. Yep. We had a few casualties. Right there. I'm going to tell you what, they're smelling really good. And we had one that fell over there. We don't want that. We had one that fell over here. Guess he wasn't happy. Got them back up. Some others fell over. Huh. Must have had an earthquake while we were here. We're just going to take our official checker right there. And we're going to stab one and see. Yep, they're starting to soften up. Yep, they are. So we're going to give them another 20 minutes. Okay? So back in we're going to go. Give them another 20 minutes. I'll tell you what though, they are smelling good. Ooh, they are. So we'll be back in about 20, okay? Oh, well, there you go. It's been another 20 minutes, so they've been cooking 40 minutes. Let's turn that annoying timer off, what do you say? Okay, let me go get him out of the toaster oven. Woo! They're toasty. So they've been in there 40 minutes. Now, I can already tell you, they're crispy. We're going to take the official checker. Yep. That fork goes right on in there. Surely it does. But we're going to have to let them cool. And you can see, they're nicely covered with that seasoning mix. And here's the thing. If you don't want that much seasoning on yours, dump more olive oil in there. Thin it out. These are flavorful. But we'll be giving them a taste test here in a minute. Okay? But we're going to have to let them cool. Because they're 425 degrees right now. But they're done. Now they'll cook a little more. But they'll be just fine. Yes, they will. 
so they've been cooling off only thing left to do is get a couple of them and try and they're coated with all those delicious seasonings right here and I've already tried a few and they're crispy which is what you want and one of my favorite accompaniments is of course Heinz ketchup my preferred brand. Woo. So. Mm mm mm. Oh, yeah. Once you dip them in that fine Heinz ketchup, I don't know if you can hear that crunch. But they're crunchy. There's one thing about it. They got plenty of flavor. They're not bland by any means. But yeah, one thing I did was I had to pour more tablespoons. See, here's the thing. I used to make these for the family. And I didn't, as you can see, I made a whole tray full tonight out of two potatoes. But for the family, I would have made a potato for each person. So that would have been five potatoes. Well, no, four potatoes. Excuse me. And that. And put enough oil in there to, you know, make it all fluid. And that's what happens. Memory gets a little weak. Woo. Well, I'm telling you what. They got a little warmth. They're not going to burn your mouth. But they are going to give you that little bit of warmth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But hey, we know, know it don't count unless old Mr. Tom eats them on camera, right? So let's give it a shot. Yep. Oh, yeah. So like I'm saying, they're all crusted up. That skin is nice and crispy. There's no lack of spice here. And the spices, like I'm saying, you could easily do up six potatoes. Of course, I saved mine in the Ziploc bag. And I love that ketchup on it. It's the traditional way. Now, if you want to dip them in ranch, some of that there Chick-fil-A sauce, buffalo sauce, whatever, you go right ahead. This is how I enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. At 40 minutes cook time, that potato is pillowy soft inside. I think that's because of the rust. And it's jam-packed with flavor. In fact, it's got so much flavor, this is one time you need to have suspenders on or have a hold of your drawers because it's going to slap them right off. Oh, yes, it is. These are not any of those roadside bland ones. These are the ones that are going to make you take up and notice. And they'll be a fine accompaniment to what else I'll be making tonight. That maybe if all of you are good, I might show you. Something that, along with these being in all of our convenience gas stations that have a hot bar, is available all throughout our little town and most southern towns. Maybe you can guess. But hey, this will do me for tonight as a treat until I get the real dinner entree of cooking. So until I, little Gracie, the kitty crew, see y'all on that next video. Y'all take care. Stay safe. 
And may God bless you as you bless those in your lives. Goodbye for now. Mm -mm. Mm. I can taste that paprika. got that little hint of pepper and just enough heat to make you know it's there. Whew, those came out just fine. I didn't have to eat up no oil. Oh, sorry folks. I was eating in front of me again. Later all. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. There's some crunch to them, too. Yes, there is. Can't have none, Gracie.